Hey. <laughs> Hi everybody. Hello everybody, it's Danielle Iwata. And Peter Sunderland. So I'm the Director of Teacher Operations for SayBC. And we're reporting live from Say ABC headquarters, <laughs> all the way in... Shanghai. Can't believe you're in Shanghai. I can't believe so. <laughs> and Danielle's going to be doing some interviewing with me. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I'm British and I come from Oxford in the UK. And I've been in China for almost 14 years. I came here as an English teacher for my gap year and that became a very, very long gap year and a longer gap year. Um, so yeah, I started as a teacher and then I became like an academic manager and did some training with teachers um, and I've worked for a few different companies all over China, including other online other companies, doing slightly different things to what we do at CBC and VAP Kid though. Uh, so now I've been working here for the last almost 10 months uh, with CBC. It was an accident, like 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 most people are getting to teach you. No, I think like a lot of people are getting to teaching. It's it's kind of it's because you're interested, and then and then you end up the situation that you you find yourself in ends up and and you and it becomes a really good way of getting a career and and working. So I mean, the reason I ended up in China and doing teaching was I had two Chinese housemates when I was doing my MA at university, who um, were submitting their their res, their um, end of year projects. And they said, oh, could you just check it and make sure it's okay? And I read it and it was not good. So I, had, I went through with them and rewrote it for them. And then I heard about the sort of TEFL industry and I went and did a CELTA and moved out to China for, as I say, one year. Um, the CBC particularly wanted someone with teaching experience and also um, management experience to manage the teacher side of the operation because they wanted somebody that kind of understands teachers and, 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 and where they're coming from. Also in terms of the communication and how that sort of thing works, it kind of, it kind of makes sense to have a, a foreign manager in that kind of role. So what I do is I'm basically in charge of four main teams. So we have the recruitment team. So those are the guys, you, when, if you become a SABI teacher, you'll meet one of our recruiters in an interview, for example. So i um, in charge of that. And called academic quality. So that is where um, if we have any problems or complaints, we, we talk to the teachers about the quality of the classes. Um, and also then the training. All right, so, so all of the professional development stuff that we do, all of the onboard, onboarding um, processes, so that's all handled by them. And then lastly, teacher support. So that's, you know, when you're right in the middle of teaching and you have a problem, then those are the guys that you contact for that. So they deal with all the payroll and all those kind of things. all four of those things. I do all four of those things, yeah. So we have a manager for each one of those things, but I'm the director for, for the teacher side, yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> you, you mean official working hours or actual working hours? Oh. So um, I usually get in and I, I'm, I'm not a morning person, which is lucky considering that all of our classes are in the evening. So I usually come in around about 10 in the morning, tend to work through to, I usually stay around until after the kind of the really busy classes are finished. So I usually that 1940, one, once that's finished, I usually start thinking about heading home. So I usually head home about 8.30. Mm -hmm. And it depends on how busy. I mean, during the summer, we'll be working six days a week and it'll be starting earlier, finishing later, when it's really, really crazy busy. And then in the, in the quieter periods, because obviously, obviously everything's kind of seasonal, so winter period is usually quieter, so we do, we do more usual hours during that time. Yeah, I love it. I think that part of the reason for loving it is because CBC was when I, when I started, it had only been really teaching for three months and we were tiny. We, we were very, very small and we knew that we were going to be growing hugely in 2018. So it's been an incredible challenge to, to develop it as at the scale and the speed we have and all the tools and the back end systems and the communications that we have to do all of the, there's a huge amount of stuff that goes on behind the scenes that, that as a teacher you wouldn't see. You, you would see the classroom and, and, and our communication direct to you, but of course there's a huge amount of support work that has to go on. The customer service teams, the sales teams, make sure that we're really making the best online experience for, for kids in China that we can, and we're make, making sure that the, the quality of the, the, the experiences that they have in the classroom is as, as good as we can make it. huge. <laughs> but it was July of 2017 when they started um, and that was really building the classroom, the platform. We, we started off as I say with uh, like around about 100 teachers at the beginning of the year um, and lots and lots more now. 
Our teachers come from all over the world, so they're native speaking teachers, but we find that from our initial teachers where we had them purely, you know, based in the US and Canada, and now that we're seeing teachers coming from all over the world, which is great. So we've got, you know, British teachers in the, in the UK, and we've got um, British or American teachers in South America or Africa or Asia. So that's really a really great thing to see is that uh, the, the, there's a much more diversity of teachers now in, in, in CABC, which is great for our students because they can be exposed to different accents, different cultures. For, so I think the interesting thing about the growth has not just been the numbers, but the, where the people have come from and, and how they've heard about us, which has been really quite interesting about how different people hear about CABC. Yeah, sure. I think I think that the the reason for this is that the the market in China for kids teaching is very seasonal, right? So you basically from um, around about after Chinese New Year, which is usually sort of late January or February, that's when the parents start looking to really get more courses to get their kids into online classes after after school, and then that will increase, and then we'll be very very busy during the summer, um, and then also busy at the beginning of the first semester for the for the, the the school. So that's around about September, so September October, and then after that it gets much quieter. Um, so the kids are off on holiday or they're, they're doing exams and this kind of thing. So we have basically less students come in there. And that's the same whether you're teaching in a physical school in China or if it's online or in any kind of school. What I would say, I think about that is that when we, when we started, we knew that we were going to be growing really big. Um, very, very quickly. So we looked at how we were going to get, get more teachers. And I think it's fair to say that we maybe overestimated a little bit how many teachers we were going to need, particularly towards the end of last year, early part of this year. Mm. It was our first year and we didn't really know exactly what, how many students we were going to be getting. So I think we've kind of learnt from that. So as we do 2019, we'll have a much better projection of n knowing how many students we're going to be have coming in, so how many teachers we have. So what we're always trying to do is make sure that on the student side, we have enough teachers to teach all of the classes and make sure that they're great teachers. On the teacher side, of course, we know that this is people's incomes, right? And it's how, how they work. So we want to make sure that we have as high a booking rate for each teacher as we can. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, definitely not. We're one of the um, the biggest companies in China now, even from a, from from a small start. I understand that people were wondering about that because of the the lack of classes, perhaps towards the end of last year. And that's really just about how our estimations of how many teachers to to, to students we would need in the future. We'll be getting better at that. So as we grow, we can try and grow the teacher numbers and the student numbers at the same same speed. Well, uh, what I would say is I would say hang on because we, we know that come March it will start to increase and that's, that doesn't happen overnight. It's a, it's a gradual increase as we head through March, April, May and, and that it should start I increasing at that point. Yeah. So hang on I think would be the answer. <laughs> okay. When I joined this company that was one of the things that sold it to me. Mm -hmm. Having been a teacher and having knowing with how online teaching works it's, it's when you've got a company based in China and your teachers are all over the world, it's that that communication can be quite tough. I think both, both for teachers understanding wh wh where we're coming from and what we want to do and also for us to communicate to teachers, and especially when you know, the, the time differences are there. The, the only real method of, of com um, an individual conversation is via Skype or something like that. So that's really hard. So, so treating teachers in the right way is very important because from a very simple level, why not? Because I mean, as a teacher, you want to, we want our teachers to be in, in class having fun for our students so so it's really really important that we do that i would say though that i think you know as we as we go from a smaller company it's a bit easier to do that as you get bigger that that becomes more complicated and there's definitely areas we want to improve on that i think we we've had some bumps along the way in doing that but yeah it's it's i think to me it's kind of just obvious thing to do i wouldn't see why you wouldn't right <laughs> Well, thank you so much, Peter, for taking the time out to talk with me and mm -hmm. with the teacher community. For me personally, I appreciate your transparency about the bookings, okay. <laughs> the future with ABC, and mm -hmm. I think the community. Great, no, it's, it's it been great. Well. I think we could do more of these. It's quite nice to actually talk to people directly. Through Absolutely. It, and, and, and having teachers, having you here is really cool. You're the first foreign teacher we've had. So, will I be the last nope. teacher invited to say ABC? No, definitely not. I think um, we'll be doing this a lot more frequently if we can. Yeah. Awesome. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you so much for your time. Thank you. Hey, everybody. Hello, everybody. It's Danielle Iwata. And Peter Somerville. And we're here to talk. What are we here to do? <laughs> <laughs> Let's just go home. Here. <laughs> We've got jet lag, right? <laughs>